So let's start up now. Okay. This is a section on waves. So we did waves in grade 11. Not me. Do you know what creates a wave? What is a wave? Any ideas what's a wave? <laughs> Sounds like such a... Okay, first of all, you've got to get a regular vibrating motion. I think there's another name, but you've got to get a regular vibration. So here I've got a mosquito and it's flapping its wings up and down. And you get that annoying sound, right? Now, how do we get that translated into a wave? Well, that sound travels out from the source of the sound. Is that looking more like a wave? More like a wave? Yes. And what do you call these if you were a surfer on Musenberg Beach? Anyone noticed? I wonder if there are any surfers there. Are you allowed to surf? No. Okay, what do we call these parts of the wave? I'm riding along on the crest of the wave and the sun is in the sky. Which of those words is it? The crest. The crest. Anyone know what that is called? The sun. Okay, so waves have crests and troughs, and anyone know what the length between the two, crests, two successive crests is called? Wave length. And anyone know the symbol? Lambda. Lambda. Okay. The Greek symbol, lambda. Anyone know the, sub the unit for lambda? Wave length. Wave length. What's your length measured in? Simply meters. Okay, now what would be meters per second? The wave, the crest is traveling at a certain. What do we. Which of those? The wave is traveling away at a certain. Velocity. And that is measured in as a meters per second. So we're just familiarizing ourselves with the concepts again. Now, there's one last term here. If you are standing here and you're measuring it, let's put your ear here. There's your ear. And you're measuring the time between which you can't do so fast. But if it was like this, that's a regular repetitive motion. What's the time between beats? One second. About one second. So that is which of these terms here? The frequency. Not the frequency, it is the anyone know what capital C stands for? Time or the period. And that is measured in seconds. So the time between two crests is that time is the period and it is the time between two crests passing you. Now what is the frequency? What is the frequency of the vibration? Now what do you do? You get your stopwatch and you start it. And you measure how many crests come past in a second. That is the frequency equals number of crests or troughs passing per second. Okay, what do you think is the unit? Number of crests per second, what is that? What's the unit of that? 
What's the unit for crests or events? None. There is no unit. It's just a number. Okay? It's like five. Numbers don't have a unit. So to be five and then per second, what's the unit for per second? Slash S. Exactly. Or the unit is simply second to the minus one. But it's also got another, and that is called hertz. That is the number of, it's just per second. And that is hertz. Okay, there's the, the unit for, for frequency per second. So we got the velocity. Now, there's a relationship between period and frequency. Let me, let me ask you this logically. Is that a high or low frequency? High. What do you think is the time between those? High or low? Is that a small or a big time? Small time. Okay, now listen to this. Is that a big or a small frequency? That's a low frequency, a small frequency. What is the period of time? High. So what's the relationship between period and frequency? Inverse. So in other words, period equals one upon wavelength. And likewise, frequency is one upon period. I'm getting everything wrong. And this glove doesn't rub out so well. So that's the relationship. It's an inverse. Period and frequency are inversely proportional. The bigger the frequency, the smaller the period. Hey, have I lost anybody yet? All make like you can see? Um, just one last thing. Do you think that sound, the medium, the medium, now in this case it's air that the mosquito is flying in. But do you think the medium can affect the velocity? Anyone can explain to me, if you have the same sound of like a propeller in water, does it travel faster or slower? Do you hear a propeller in water? If you go, if you're above the surface, can you hear the propeller? And if you go under the surface, do you hear the propeller? Which do you hear better and which comes to you faster? Or slower? Can we take a vote? Who says water is a better conductor of sound? One. He's correct. <laughs> okay, so who now let me give you another example. If you put your ear to the railroad track, will you hear the train before you hear it coming to you through the air? If you put your ear on the railroad track. Is the steel a better conductor of sound and a yes. faster conductor of sound? Yes. Who says yes? Three, four, five of you are correct. Okay, so you're getting the idea. Air is a terrible conductor of everything. Electricity, sound, you name it. Steel, solids, liquids are all better conductors. Okay, especially of sound. So, if you change the medium, the, what do you think will happen to the velocity? Can it speed up? Yes. So what's going to happen is, say the butter, this uh, thing that's making the noise is in a medium where the sound travels fast away, this is what's going to happen. I think, am I right? The waves are going to travel away much faster. Therefore, the wavelength is going to increase. The period will stay the same because it's flapping at the same thing, but it will affect the wavelength. Does that make sense to you? I've just thought of that now. Because look, it will go further, faster. So therefore, you can change the wavelength 
by changing the medium. Okay, now let's get to Doppler. Okay, this is what Doppler is about. How many of you have mosquitoes at home? Everyone. Almost everyone. You, some don't. Ever since I've been collecting water in little ponds, I've got lots of mosquitoes at home. And do you know when they are approaching you and when they are going away from you? Like you're lying in the lights off, you hear Do you know if they're approaching, standing still, or going away from you? Yes. You do. And today we're going to tell you how you know it, even though you do know it. So who would like to take a guess and tell me how you know it's coming towards you? Do you agree with that? It's not that the mosquito is getting more excited when it gets closer to you. It's the matter that as it comes towards you, it goes, and then as it goes away from you, it goes, you can hear the pitch change. So the first thing we've got to understand is, does the sound also get louder as it comes towards you, Matthew? As a mosquito comes towards you, does the sound get louder? As a car comes towards you, does it get louder? As your screaming baby brother comes towards you, does he get louder? Yes. <laughs> yes. As he gets dragged away from you, does he get quieter? No. <laughs> Thank goodness I don't have screaming baby brothers. <laughs> but I know from past, yes, he gets quieter. Okay. So please, Doppler's got nothing to do with the loudness. It's got to do with the pitch. So as a distractor question in the Doppler, they're going to ask you, as something comes towards you, Doppler says that the mosquito will get louder, softer, lower pitch, higher pitch, which is the answer. Higher pitch. And pitch is related to which of those? Which of those is the pitch? The frequency. So we call it pitch in sound. In light we call it the color of light is the frequency. We call it the we can detect the, the, freq the frequency of light by the color. For example, let's look for a blue. That's got a higher frequency light coming off it, whoops, than red. Higher frequency, lower frequency. Because red is low frequency light, the blue will reflect white light and off it will come high frequency blue light. Okay, but in sound we talk about the pitch. Now, Here's the formula that goes with Doppler. Now, first of all, Doppler is a nice section. Why? It's only got those formulae which you should know from grade 11. Then it's got one formula, and that's the, this formula. And there's your formula for Doppler. Is a section with one formula normally an easy section? Yes. Normally, we kill Doppler. We've got a hundred percent always for Doppler. We got that formula. Not really. Where is it? Oh, there. Whoop. Let's apply some science here. Okay, so there's the Doppler formula. Okay. Here's the bad news. Because everyone was killing Doppler, really doing well, in the last few years, they've thrown in these formula. Uh, here's another formula. 
the velocity of sound is equal to frequency times wavelength. And that is the seen that formula. V equals frequency times wavelength. So, to make Doppler more difficult, they started to use more of your grade 11 wave work. So you've got to understand waves. That's why I started with your revision of waves. It's still an absolutely simple section. You should not ever get anything less than 100% work. Because it's in the end you're going to use that formula. Okay. So let's have a look at this formula and let's get the what everything stands for. Okay, so if x frequency of the source what is the source in this case here? What is the source of the sound? That is the mosquito. The frequency of the source is how much, how fast the, the mosquito flaps its wing. How often Mozzie flaps per second. So that's the frequency of the source. What do you think the fre this FL stands for? See the listener. That's you lying awake at night. That's the frequency you hear. Do you hear the same as the frequency of the as the source? No. The, this is the mozzie when it's just standing still. When it's coming to heart towards you. But it hasn't changed its flapping rate. And when it's flapping away from you, so it goes. So what do you think FL stands for? The frequency of the listener. That's what you hear. So what are we doing? We are doing something to the frequency of the source, and that something is in brackets, to get the frequency of the listener. Now, you guys who love maths, what are, you, what are we doing in brackets? We are creating a thing called, we learnt it in grade 7, a thing called a, begins with an F, R, a fraction. We're going to take the frequency of the source, we're going to apply a fraction to it, and we're going to get the frequency of the listener. Now, if it's coming towards you, will that fraction be more than one or less than one? Think about it carefully. If it's coming towards you, will the frequency rise? Mm -hmm. To raise something, we've got to times it by a fraction that is big or small? A big numerator. Bigger than one. Do you see how simple that is? If it's coming towards you, all that junk is going to be greater than one. 